All right, let's talk about this show. It's AEW Dynamite. Wardlow came out to open up the show, called out Christian, who came out with Luchasaurus. You'll never guess what happened. A brawl broke out. Wardlow got low blowed, and then they brought a ladder to the ring, and they destroyed this guy with a ladder. And uh, whatever, dude. All I know is we, we Christian retired match. <laughs> due to damage to everything. And if you talk to Edge, like a lot of this is ladder matches. So at 49 years old, why he's coming back for It's not even like it's a six man where you can like stay out of the action. He's coming back at 49 to do a ladder match. So I would have advised against that. But hey, who am I? Lee Moriarty and Big Bill against Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen. This was a very, very fun match. And uh, ended with Darby hitting the coffin drop. And then he pinned Lee with a side headlock takeover to send a message to MJF. The BCC attacked the Bucks three on two backstage, went after Matt's bad arm. So they're going to be working that gimmick at the pay-per-view. And Moxie said they were the only elite in this business. We had an Orange Cassidy promo. So he's interviewed about Kyle Fletcher. He's gasping for air. He says, yeah, I've heard about Kyle. I've heard about a lot of guys that would like a shot of my international title the pay-per-view. So, hey, I'll take on all of them. And so uh, I wrote here, sounded like a setup for a battle royal, which in fact it was. Hey, if you want my reports, you can subscribe to me on Twitter. At Brian Alvarez. I send all of my television reports, just like the good old days of Figure Four Weekly. If you want my Figure Four television reports, grab those as a subscriber on Twitter. Sammy faced Exodus Prime, who I think was a Transformer. He beat him in 28 seconds with the GTH, or maybe a GoBot. Can't remember which it was. And then he cut a total babyface promo where he vowed to win the AEW title in Las Vegas. So definitely a Transformer, not a Decepticon. And then we had uh, Jared Sanjay, Sotnam, and Lethal coming out. They are immediately jumped by FTR with gimmicks, and they start beating the heck out of everybody. They're tearing off uh, Jay Lethal's clothes, setting up that tuxedo match at Double or Nothing. And then who should hit the ring but Karen Jarrett, who gave Cash a low blow. Jeff laid out Dax with the stroke. And if that wasn't enough, Sotnam, who got shoved off the stage through a table, he comes back. He double choke slams both of these dudes. And then Jared and Lethal get guitars and they smash guitars over their heads. So I'm guessing, I could be wrong, but I'm guessing FDR probably retains the uh, pay per view after this brutal beating. But this was a good segment. I don't know. You're talking about tuxedo matches. There needs to be a boogie woogie man, Jimmy Valiant type of character. You know what I liked about this, by the way, as well? Speaking of boogie woogie. Well, there was no uh, Mark Briscoe out there Hmm? because in theory, he should have been smartened up by now. But, you know, maybe uh, whatever happened, he wasn't there. So now we still have to wonder, what is he going to do here at this pay-per-view? With a Darby promo, Sammy walked up and uh, Darby, I mean, Sammy made it very clear. I will not be laying down for Max. I am not going to make it easy for any of you, whether it's me, you, Jungle Boy, one of us. Needs to take the belt off that prick. And this is interesting because, like, if you watched that uh, All Access, I mean, Sammy just came off as a total 100,000% babyface. But not a lot of people watch the show. So they're going with that babyface thing here. And you can go one of two ways. You can You can stick with it, or it's a swerve. And, in fact, he tries to lay down for MJF. It gets broken up. Him and MJF work together as heels. Then you do the turn later. There are a lot of ways they could go with this. My guess is they're going to do that because it's a little harder to work a three-on-one babyface versus heel four-way if those babyfaces actually are all getting together to take the guy out. So we'll see which way they go. Ruby and Tony versus Britt and Hikaru Shida. So the story is that Jamie Hayter has an injury. That's why she was not in this match. But whatever it is, they still announced a match for her in a a week and a half or whatever at the pay-per-view. So I'm not sure what the situation is, but she wasn't there. This match had a ton of heat. 
These fans loved Hikaru Shida. And finally, in the end, the heels sprayed uh, the spray paint or whatever in Britt's eyes. Storm Zero for the pin. So Tony pinned the champion's friend to set up a match with the champion at the pay-per-view. Which, quite frankly, should have been her pinning the champion, but the champion was not there. Tony Khan did his big announcement, and yes, the premiere location will be announced next week. So, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. And you know, the first time when they were, when they were, they didn't want to announce Punk, but they wanted you to know it was CM Punk. Which, by the way, some people were saying, you know, maybe that's why they didn't announce it. They want to do that again. Well, if they wanted to do that, they would have said where the show was at. They didn't. They specifically did not mention, and they're going to mention it next week. Because, in fact, as noted, there is an issue here. And that is a factual statement from both sides, from WBD and AEW. It is not a story I'm making up. Did I mention this earlier? I want to make sure I get that clear. Okay. <laughs> I was just crazy enough to believe that all of these things would be ironed out, you know, the day before you decide to go ahead and announce such things. But apparently, that's not the case. Roderick Strong and Chris Jericho false count anywhere. You dudes want to see a fight? Roderick chopped the snot out of this guy. Jericho's bleeding from the chest. And this was before they even fought up the stairs and into the concession area. Minutes in. They're hitting each other with ice cream and it's like I think it was I think Jericho was the one that took the suplex. You know when you go to a show and there's that concession stand, but like the permanent one. So there's like a, a marble thing. Jericho got suplex on that. No give. <laughs> then they fight into the stairwell. There's all sorts of gimmicks. And yes, finally they fight outside. And you see Adam Cole is not allowed in the building with Chris Jericho. But this was not in the building anymore. And he attacks Jericho. He gets his revenge for what Jericho did to his girlfriend. Roddy hits a jumping knee, pins him in a flower bed. This match was awesome. So I presume there's going to be a stip of some sort for this Jericho-Adam Cole match coming up at the pay-per-view. Roddy could have been a real heel. They had all those Purell hand stations around, you know, and, and he could have just taken Jericho's chest and took a bunch of that alcohol, just rubbed it all over that bloody chest he had, made him burn. Not that I would want to see that. And then we had Roosh and Jungle Boy. <laughs> Jungle Boy would have been better off being dipped in a bunch of alcohol than having to go in there with Roosh. What, uh, what did everyone think of this match? Because I, think, I will uh, say this. I yeah. will say this before you go. I was aghast when this thing was over. I was appalled. And Dave was appalled. And I talked to people in AEW who were appalled. But I did hear from people that, that liked it, that thought that, you know, Jungle Boy was a fighter, and he never gave up, and he, he managed to win. But see, here's the thing. Bad way to tell that story, then. Here's the thing. Yes, he did win. He won when the referee pulled the guy off of him. And as the other, as the opponent for Jungle Boy was distracted, Jungle Boy rolled him up and pinned him using the tights. He did win. But this brother is supposed to be headlining a pay-per-view in a week and a half. And the key to me is he is a weak challenger. Does anybody here believe that actually any of these pillars are going to beat MJF? No. No. All so, that matched it last night. Sorry, God. Well, I'm just saying, when you have a weak challenger, you need to make him as strong as humanly possible. And this match here, when it was over, it was like, Roosh did everything in his power to get himself over and not get Jungle Boy over. And Jungle Boy did not come out of this better than when he went in. Now, if you would have done this exact same match, but he finally caught this guy in the snare trap and submitted him, fine. That did not happen. He did a roll-up using the tights, and he eked a victory 
and I did not like this one bit. Brian, even if it ends the way that you would have wanted it to end, where you said it works, that only works when it's like a guy's third or fourth match against somebody who's just starting out, and they're getting put down, put down, beat down. I need one more shot. I need one more shot. And then finally he gets that lucky one. And then you can go from there with the heel saying, no, that was just luck and all that stuff. And that's how you ascend somebody. This was silly. I mean, who booked Roosh to be in that situation with Jungle Boy? I mean, the matchup didn't make any sense. Why would Roosh do anything else than what he usually does anyway? And that's at the the end of the day, he was right. Because if you're going to let him out there and you're going to let him do that, he's the guy that I want to see face MJF. He's the guy I want to see actually in a championship match more than any of those other three guys. So the whole matchmaking behind it, how the match was structured. But when it, again, right back to the very beginning, why would you make that matchup of all the matchups, especially the ones you had on the show featuring the rest of the pillars? Why would you do this with him? You know, as Dave noted last night, the the odds for that match, MGF is a 50 to 1 favorite. Well, they when, you, when you're a 50 to 1 favorite, you have got to make the three challengers so strong that fans think, well, which one of these three is going to beat MJF? Right now, fans are thinking none of these three yeah. have a chance of beating MJF. Maybe, maybe Darby. But I don't even think anybody actually believes that. They Nobody, certainly don't believe that about Jungle Boy. Nobody's benefited from this at all. Darby is is maybe a little bit, you know, but MJF is the only one who's really benefited because he's the only one, cream of the crop-wise, it's not even close. Jungle Boy has lost so much, and Sammy is still up in the air, depending on what they do with the character. And we had Ricky Starks and Jay White, which went to a disqualification. Good match, Which though. I was fine with. They had a good match. Juice got involved. He got hit with a chair. I, the fans didn't like not having a finish, but you know what? It's okay to do an occasional countout DQ to build something up for the future. And they did it here. And then the main event segment, Don Callis came out for a promo. He got like, hey, listen, I don't like this guy, but he needed about five minutes to do a promo. And he did about 20 seconds. And then out comes Kenny. Out comes security. Out comes the BCC. And finally, the hangman returned. He saved the elite. He stood side by side with them. And the fans were going crazy for this. After all these years, they reunited. And uh, they will be doing, at Double or Nothing, Anarchy in the Arena. And I uh, thought it was a great angle. The main event. I was so disgusted. Why does a guy like that that's been a champ for so long have to have three guys come in and help him? Disgusting, isn't it? Yes, it is so disgusting. There was a lot of great matches. There was the first day. The second day was back to this same old crap. Her favorite was Gunther versus Drew versus Sheamus. Oh, I hate Gunther. You hate Gunther? Really? Why do you hate about him? Just doesn't look right to me. <laughs> it doesn't look right to you. Okay. All right. His favorite was the first 34 minutes of Cody Roman. His least favorite was the final three seconds of Cody Roman. Granny, do you agree with any of these uh, opinions here? What was that? I think she fell asleep. Yeah. Bailey was on Wheel of Fortune mm -hmm. and by E. By E? He said by E. Big E. I Big guess. E. Okay. Big E. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For your birthday this year, I'm not going to get you something decent. You're going to get nothing. Granny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Comic book villain. I keep saying this. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.